Hello, I'm Julie Dorsey, the founder and chief scientist of Mental Canvas, a software technology company that is reimagining drawing for the digital age. Before I get started, I'd like to thank Martin Day, AEC Magazine, and the other organizers and sponsors of Next Build for the opportunity to speak to you today. This is what a drawing looks like today. It's my contention that drawing is going to change. I'm going to show you what drawing will be in the future. From Leonardo's anatomic sketches to Frank Gehry's conceptual drawings to movie storyboards, drawing is basic to exploring new ideas, communicating new concepts, creating new knowledge, and designing new products. But unlike text, photography, and music, which have been fundamentally transformed by the computer, drawing today on a computer isn't very different than drawing on paper was during the Renaissance. Mental Canvas is a technology that takes drawing to a place it's never been. Our vision is to enhance visual communication via computers by fundamentally elevating the way people draw. This is a single drawing created by a single person. You may recognize the building. It's Grand Central's terminal in New York City. That you see this as an animation is due to our new technology. The new animation is an integral part of the drawing. This drawing tells you much more about Grand Central than a traditional drawing ever could, but with only a, a modest amount of additional effort. Drawing isn't just for artists and, artists and designers. Anyone can make a compelling drawing or doodle with Mental Canvas. Here's an example using our authoring package um, by putting together some basic refrigerator art. So here we have a simple two-dimensional drawing, a house, a pathway, and a tree. And we can select some strokes on the pathway and reproject them, and then grab the tree and reproject it. And interestingly, the drawing looks exactly the same from the position from what we drew it, the view from which we drew it, but you can see now that it's been extended into 3D. Here's a more elaborate scene um, authored in the system. Here, the artist is drawing on a single canvas. This is a cave on a mountain. The system is organized with a set of canvas drawings, uh, which you see along the left. Right now, we have a single canvas that's being updated as she draws. We think uh, canvases are transparent sheets. They're like sheets of acetate uh, placed in space. And here we're using our hinge tool to select a feature in the original drawing. And we've now added a second canvas or second transparent canvas, which you can see in the upper left. This is uh, of course positioned at an angle to the first canvas. And now we're drawing on that canvas. Now the bridge is going to meet a third canvas in the foreground. So here we're now adding a new canvas that's parallel to the first canvas. And you notice that all the drawing in mental canvas is done in a frontal planar way, meaning it's like almost like having a window in front of you that you're moving around in the scene and drawing on. Okay, now we're gonna add some, some trees, a little bit of landscape in the foreground. Okay, so now we have three canvases. You can see up above that we have two modes, drawing and now view mode. Okay, so I'm gonna show you something here that's a little bit different. Um, we're now adding some strokes for some water and You'll see in a moment that those strokes are actually on the back canvas. Um, obviously, we'd like them to connect to the canvas in the front foreground. And so we can use the hinge again 
to take those strokes, select them, and then reproject them such that they connect to the mountain in the foreground or the canvas in the foreground. And you can see that they do that. So that's a very nice feature in that you can draw on the system without having to worry about where your strokes will end up in the end. You can draw freely and put strokes on any canvas and then reproject them later. You can also notice that, uh, as I mentioned in the previous example, those strokes look exactly the same in the view from which they were drawn. Um, but they've, of course, been reinterpreted spatially. You can also draw in situ, as we see here. And um, one also thing, you can also have layers associated. So canvases are spatial constructs and layer, any canvas can have a layer stack. So here we're actually using some opacity paint to hide some of the hidden lines behind. Along the bottom, we have what we call bookmarks, which are key views of the scene. And here we're now in view mode and we're selecting a set of key views. And from those views, we can generate an animation and we can output that animation as a video uh, at a variety of different formats or resolutions. Okay, so that's the basic authoring system. I want to also show that we can, in addition to working with strokes, we can also work with photographs or images. So here we have a single photograph and we've saved a key view and a bookmark below. That canvas is sitting on a single, uh, sorry, the image is sitting on a single canvas. And now the artist is going in and selecting a part of this photograph, namely the right side of the building. And then once again, we can bring up our hinge tool. Um, and similar to what I just showed you with strokes, we can actually reproject uh, raster data or build um, a portion of this building uh, photograph in this case. And again, we can continue in the same vein and select uh, this guardrail out front. In addition, I should say to manipulating the photo itself, we can also bring photos in as references. Um, you can draw on top of a photo and then throw it away. Um, and here, we're now um, gonna project Again, that guardrail, bring it, uh, angle it toward us and note again that it looks exactly the same from our original view. So here we're gonna select these guys in the foreground. And now um, more of the ground plane. And just like you saw with the initial house sketch, we can now connect that um, ground plane to the guardrail. And now we're pulling these guys forward. Again, they look the same from the original as they did in the original photograph. And now we can go in and draw in situ. We can add some characters to the scene. And of note, you could actually put characters behind some of these elements that we projected. So you could have them partially occluded. So it's not just like uh, editing a photograph. And here we've just introduced a new canvas that's behind uh, some elements and then you can go in and draw.
And again, with a series of bookmarks, we can now create a simple animatic. Um, here we're adding and deleting bookmarks and adjusting timing between them. So this is a really nice set of features for putting together a design proposal or working out some ideas. You can very quickly uh, take an, a single photo, manipulate it, add some content to it, and then create a little animation that can be shared with customers or collaborators. So now I'd like to show a short video which um, describes what some of our early customers have to say about Mental Canvas. With Mental Canvas, I can actually get inside my drawing. It's really magical. It's the same way that you use drawing on paper, but it, it goes 360 degrees, you can draw anywhere. It's a game-changing tool, especially for what we do at Disney. I can basically now start to design rides with this. In order for us to do that same amount of work, we would have to hire a whole bunch of programmers, a whole bunch of visual artists, but Mental Canvas allows a single person to be that sole designer and create that whole vision very quickly. The cool thing is that it's really easy to use and will make creating layout for animation in my field a lot easier. Everybody says, whoa, when they see it. I mean, most clients can't read plans and they can't read sections, they can't read flat drawings, they need to see a perspective. Mental Canvas is all about the joy of drawing and expressing an idea. I just love it and I can't imagine designing without it. Uh, the output of Mental Canvas is a rich new graphical media type, which we call a spatial drawing which can be shared, of course, through video, but also through um, a web-enabled player. Uh, it can run on any website, in an article, in a proposal, or so on. Uh, this, um, this kind of content is very well suited to today's multi-touch digital devices. Um, it's the, those are like the perfect means of consuming and interacting with this kind of content. And it's also great because non-designers can consume and interact with these spatial drawings with no training whatsoever. As long as they have a device, it just basically runs very seamlessly. Um, there's a large market for this kind of content in beyond architecture and uh, engineering construction or also uh, is a market for this in ebooks and visual novels, educational materials, advertising, comics, uh, multimedia, digital art, news, sports, and games. Um, now I want to share uh, several different examples of the kind of content that could be generated with Mental Canvas. Uh, the New York Times has used Mental Canvas for a number of different stories. Um, here is an article for the US Open uh, written by the architectural critic Michael Kimmelman and drawn by a Times uh, artist. And here you can see the tennis center and then a number of the different venues all drawn and explored with mental canvas. And again, uh, this, the content is very immersive and allows you to see spaces in a new way. Here you see uh, the main Arthur Ashe Arena, along with some of the smaller venues. The Times has also used Mental Canvas for World Cup coverage, Super Bowl coverage here from the World Cup by using a single photograph of two of the most interesting goals. Uh, this, the Times took apart two key plays, um, separated out the players and so on into different layers and reprojected them and added annotation to tell it, dissect the plays and show you how the ball goes from uh, a quick tap through to actually landing in the goal. And you could watch a video of this play many, many times and still not be able to see exactly how the ball ends up in the goal. 
I like to think of this kind of use of mental canvas as uh, personalizing a photograph. So you could take a photograph and pull out different kinds of information and tell a story in a way that's very difficult to do any other in any other uh, software. Here, if you look carefully, you can see actually that the background has not been projected at all. It's still completely flat. Um, all of the action and projection has been taken has been done in the foreground. Okay, uh, here's an example of a cafe that was designed and developed in Mental Canvas. And this is actually using our custom web player. So instead of just watching a video or seeing stills of the scene, um, here the user is freely navigating in the scene. Um, and this is really helpful from a design standpoint with working with customers and collaborators because instead of uh, just looking at stills and trying to imagine what something is like, just at the drawing stage, you're actually able to immerse yourself in the drawing and get a really good feel for what the space will be like. And here's a very recognizable uh, scene. This is the Acropolis, of course, in Athens, drawn by Carol Shung. Here you can see that it's a pretty loose sketch. And it gives you a sense of how uh, mental canvas works. As I mentioned at the beginning, uh, the, the scenes are comprised of transparent canvases with drawings on them. And those strokes on those drawings can be manipulated spatially. So here you can see by the juxtaposition of these canvases with strokes, we get this sense of being at the Acropolis um, immersed in the site but it's actually still a drawing um, and it's still pretty loose. So this gives you an idea of what's possible. Here, this is also a nice example because we are actually looking at, we started with an overhead site view and now we're immersed in perspectives a variety of different places along the way. This is again being shown to you via our web player. So we're able, that's how we're able to interactively explore this drawing. I should also mention that in the software, I showed the ability to make a bookmark path, which can be saved and output to video. And we could play that pre-programmed path as well as interactively exploring. And along that path, you can stop and look around uh, but you can also play it through, of course, for a um, more refined sequence. So in the same way that the word processor has revolutionized text processing, Mental Canvas is going to elevate the way we draw and fundamentally change our conception of what a drawing can be. Thank you. I look forward to discussing Mental Canvas with you during the Q&A.